Hi everyone, Laura Renner here with Freedom Makers Virtual Assistant Services. I'm happy to, excited to share some tips with you today. And um, if anyone joins, then we can have some uh, question and answers at the end. I'll just be spending about five to eight minutes um, sharing a tip with you. We will continue these. Um, at this time, we'll do them every other week on Thursday at noon Pacific time. And we'll either be sharing tips on how to outsource effectively or maybe even share some case studies and maybe even highlight and feature some of our freedom makers for you. As a reminder, we provide, we create freedom for small business owners by providing virtual assistance services. And our assistants gain freedom as well because they're military spouses and they, are, they now have portable work opportunities that they can continue no matter when or where the military moves their families. All right, so let's get to the heart of today's talk which is the number one tip to effectively using a virtual assistant. And so what might that tip be? And that is to determine your expectations. All right, like, do you want someone who's there immediately? When, like when you call them, they're gonna take care of it right away. Is that your expectation? Or is the expectation that um, do you, work on a whim, like you don't really know what you want them to do until you want them to do it? Um, or do you have systems in mind that they can just do in the background without really interacting with you? Um, or do you want someone who is an expert at everything? Think about that for a second. I saw this posted in a Facebook group a couple of weeks ago where a virtual assistant posted a posting and someone listed all the things they want their virtual assistant to do. And it was basically run their entire business. And so people were like, and so she posted, you know, do you get upset about when you see postings like this? Because it's like they're asking for so much. And someone wrote in the comments, yeah, if I would, re if I were to respond to a post like that, I would say, you're looking for a COO and my hourly rate is that of a COO. So think about that. Is your expectation that they're gonna do everything and basically that you're looking for a COO, which is a lot different than a virtual assistant. Or is your expectation that you don't trust anyone else? Do you think that no one else can do it as good as you? So that's the number one tip. Determine what your expectation is. And if it's the right expectation, or it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, but that expectation determines what kind of VA you should look for. Are you looking for one that's more like a COO? Or are you looking for one that's just gonna handle everything exactly the way you want it done behind the scenes um, without really requiring any input from you? If you want someone who's on your beck and call, that might be more of an employee than a virtual assistant. So a virtual assistant works best when you have systems in place that they can take care of on their own um, without a lot of input from you. That is the best way to use a virtual assistant. So, let, but let's say, okay, you determine your expectations and you do want someone at your beck and call or you do want someone who's more like a COO or you, or you want someone who can just run your system behind the scenes. Once you know what they are, then, then you can find the person who can handle that type of work. And so then let's say you find that person and they're the right fit for you. Now you need to set the right expectations. So determine what can they accomplish? What do you want them accomplish? When do you want it done by? What's a good turnaround time that you think that you want it done? Like, do you want it done within an hour? Do you want it done within 24 hours, within one business week? What is a good turnaround time that you would regularly expect things to be done by? What is your preferred communication mode? Is email preferable to you? Text messaging, phone calls? Um, you, know, you yourself know what you prefer and you need to let your VA know that because if you prefer text messages and they're emailing you, then you're gonna get frustrated that you're not seeing anything and they're gonna get frustrated that they're not hearing back from you. And then finally, do what I call set it and forget it systems. Create systems in place or pass systems in place where they can do the work without needing a lot of your input. Um, so what we talk about set it and forget it systems, we talk about triggers, tools, and actions. Triggers being what is something that kicks them into action. So maybe they receive a text from you, they receive an email from a client, 
or it's the same time every day or every week that something needs to be done. The tools are all the login information, all the templates, everything that they need to get that work done. And then the action is, what is the work that needs to be done? So that is a set it and forget it system in a nutshell. So to recap, determine what your expectations are. Maybe think about, are they really a good, a viable expectation for a virtual assistant? Maybe you need a COO. Maybe you need an online business manager. Maybe you need an in-person employee. So determine what your expectations are. Determine the right fit based on your expectations or adjust your expectations. And then once you find the right person, make sure you set the expectations with them, particularly around what you want them to do, when you want it done by, and how you want them to let you know. All right, well, that's it in a nutshell. We'll be sure to share that with you more going forward. But if you have any questions or any comments, feel free to say below and we will respond. All right, we like to keep these short and simple. See you next time. Bye.